In our universe, there exists tons of rules, and generally, rules are there for a reason. I'm not talking about things like the law of gravity or the speed of light. Nothing like that. I just don't think that anyone will argue that we should be running red lights while driving. But what if you had someone with a life-threatening injury in the backseat of your car? I'd be looking both ways in the intersection and getting to the hospital as fast as possible. I think most people would understand in that situation why I would break a rule that generally applies 99.9% .9 of the time. I'm just saying, there are exceptions to rules for when they just don't make sense to follow. In League, there are a lot of pieces of common knowledge advice like don't play around your losing lanes, don't fight when down numbers, play on the side with the objective, and way more. You've probably heard a lot of these sayings not only from other people, but from our guides as well, because generally it is good advice. But if we want to really get to the next level of play, we can't rely on rules forever, and we'll eventually need to have the awareness to know when to completely ignore normally very sound advice. Today, we're going to go over some scenarios where breaking the rules is exactly what the game calls for, and letting you in on some secrets on how challenger players can find the actual play in a spot that it might seem obvious what to do, when in reality, it isn't. Before we get into it though, if you truly want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then head to skillcap.com. It's completely risk-free to try us out as you're kept safe with rank up insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skillcapped, then you get your money back, no questions asked. Come check us out with the link in the description below and get the rank you've always wanted. All right, now let's get into today's guide. To understand when to break the rules, what we really need to know is why a rule exists in the first place. What is it there for? To explore this, let's dive into one of the most common rules for junglers. After your first base, return to the side that you started on. Basically, this just means that if you start your clear on topside, after your first recall, you'll want to head back to topside. This is something we've taught in the past, and something that most high elo players will say as a blanket statement. And it's for good reason. At its core, this statement exists for the sake of reducing risk. In the case that you full clear down, your bottom side camps respawn after your top side. If you just recall and go back bottom, all your camps will be down still, and you're just going to be banking everything on the fact that you will be able to get a gank or invade off, which is really high risk. Having camps up nearby is the crux of efficient jungling. If we were to go topside and realize that we don't have a gank or invade, we can always fall back on our camps. Not only that, but they'll be leveled up camps as well, and be worth more experience since we've killed them before. This means that in a lot of cases, this rule holds up, but there are of course exceptions, namely if you don't have a lot of risk when going to the wrong side. Let's take a look at a random diamond game where Zac did in fact follow the rule. He starts his clear on top side, full clears down, and ends up getting a huge gank off onto bot lane. Without anything to do afterwards, he recalls and heads back top side to not really get much besides picking up part of a wave before heading back to his camps. So should Zac have done something differently? I'd argue yes. And here's why. In the gank bottom, Zack got every single summoner off of the enemy bot lane. Both Twitch and Lux are flashless and completely vulnerable being immobile champions. With the wave having crashed to the tower, we know now that as they come back to lane, they're going to have to eventually push out. And this is exactly what happens in the game. Twitch and Lux overextend as the wave is pushing away from them, and if Zack were here, this was a super easy double kill. He could have based and ran straight back bottom actually beating his own pike to this bush to be ready for the play since he recalled first. But just having summoners be down for the enemy laners isn't enough to fully justify going for this play, so what else can we look at? Oftentimes, the statement to return to the side that you started on is in the context of not much happening in the first clear. You might do the crab right on spawn and then recall right after, meaning that your base happens around 350. But if there is a play that happens during your first clear and your recall is significantly delayed, the whole dynamic shifts. The reason why we want to go back topside is so that we have camps to do as a backup option. But if we're delayed at all, our bot side camps will actually be coming up as well. In this game, Zack doesn't recall until 425, which means that by the time he gets to his gromp, his raptors are starting to come up already. This would mean that being on bot side on this timer doesn't quite carry the same risk of having nothing to do, due to the respawning camps actually, well, respawning. So from this example, we can say that having a delayed first base decreases the need to return to the side you started on, as does blowing sums from laners or having a lane pushing back to you, since your success rate on the return gank goes up. In a similar vein, another rule of start on the side opposite of where you want to gank exists, and again, is something we talk about a lot. The reasoning is almost identical. 
If you clear out a quadrant only to gank the same side, you're not going to have anything to fall back on if the gank fails. On top of this, you're leaving your other quadrant completely open to being counter jungled, and it's generally pretty inadvisable. But again, this guide wouldn't exist if there weren't cases where you're meant to break this rule. We can look at a challenger game between Sheedan and On Fleek, two great junglers, and see that what Sheedan does directly breaks this advice, as well as the first rule that we've already laid out. Sheedan decides to start on his right in this game, and then makes a polarizing decision to clear down to his Krugs, to then look for something else on bot side. But why do this if all the counterpoints that we already laid out exist? Again, it comes down to the risk. I think we can say that the point in time at which he made the decision to do this was right after killing his raptors, at 2 minutes. He could decide to clear up here, or do what he did in the game, which was go back to his Krugs. If we look at this timer, there are a few important pieces of information that he has available to him here that let him assess the situation and know to break the rule. One is that initially he saw a ward get placed by his raptor camp before starting his red. So when he passes over this ward again, he's purposely manipulating what his opponents know about him. As he walks into the bush, the enemy team will assume that he was more likely to continue clearing up, as the most efficient route to Krugs would be to go straight from raptors without going through the bush at all. This already makes the enemy bot lane and jungle less likely to play around the gank, but on top of this, we have two more pieces of info. Second, he saw that his bot lane had wave control at this time, and knew that they would be able to get the push based on the positioning in the lane. This means that not only can his opponents not ward since they're going to be pushed in, he would be able to invade with the priority, or go for a dive if the wave crashes. Third, he knows that the enemy bot lane does not have heal or exhaust. Seraphine actually has teleport, which means that they lack a combat summoner and have way less protection than normal against the dive if it actually happens. Of course, it does, and they not only get kill and assist gold, but also deny Seraphine the wave under her tower, and get summoners from the bot lane. Essentially, Silas was able to analyze a lot of factors in this game that made the possibility of getting something bot lane much higher, and simply found that the benefits outweighed the risk after calculating what play to do. I do also want to show that Silas ends up staying on bot side for a long time here, even after this initial gank. He goes for the crab, and repeat ganks before finally recalling. Here he does actually decide to return to the opposite side of where he started, and does not take advantage of his respawn camps, instead favoring to protect his top side from Gragas' invade. However, let's not delve too much into this, and instead look at another rule that is often talked about. You should reset when you have a lot of gold. Once again, this is generally extremely solid advice, but we will once again ask why that's the case. Spending gold generally opens up new plays for you. If you need to be strong in order to brute force an invade, for example, then purchasing allows you to get strong enough to do it. The same idea applies to literally any play you want to do. Dragon, Rift Herald, Ganks, for pretty much anything, there is a default level of strength that you're going to need. And if you don't spend your gold when you have a lot of it, chances are you aren't going to be strong enough to do it. But again, there are always exceptions. Let's look at a game I played while recording a smurf commentary for our website. For some context, I'm already really far ahead on Kindred. I've just come out of base after buying my full Kraken Slayer, so I'm feeling really good about my strength currently. Almost immediately, I'm able to put this strength to good use with a gank right away. To say I get a lot of money off this play would be an understatement. I get a triple kill on top of some plates and solo first tower gold, meaning I come out with 2000 plus gold from this one play alone. So while I do technically have a ton of gold and it would usually be advisable to just recall to spend it, we really have to ask the question, does recalling now open up a new play for me? Just looking at the scoreboard and the items, I think it's fair to say that I'm plenty strong to do whatever I want to do next, which includes invading for the red or going for any gank that seems available. In fact, recalling actually removes the play in this case, since I might miss the timing to steal away Zach's red if I go to base. So for this reason, I choose to stay out on map even with this amount of gold, and continue to keep up the pressure. Even in the worst case scenario of Zach coming here to stop me, I still would have been fine, and I think that's the important thing to emphasize. The rule exists so that you don't take fights that you won't be prepared for, but if you know why the rule exists, you're also going to know when to break it. And that's the nature of all of these statements. There are always lots of generally good pieces of advice, but nothing is going to be tailored for the specific game that you find yourself in. 
We didn't cover everything, but it's because it'd be impossible to do so. Even for rules that seem incredibly obvious, we always need to ask why. What is the rule trying to prevent us from doing? If we think back on the red light example from the beginning of the guide, I think it's obvious why we need to stop at red lights, but rules get thrown out the window in extraneous circumstances. And it just so happens that League is a game with a ton of variables and a lot of crazy stuff that we just can't account for when making guides. Every game is going to be different, and the real next level comes from taking all of the good pieces of advice you learn from us and other great players and figuring out when it applies and when it doesn't. And of course, the best piece of advice for improving fast is to use our service at skillcap.com. We take the highest priority skills you need to learn to climb ranks fast, such as wave control, and then break it down into a step-by-step -step course of bite-sized, one to two minute videos that are easy to understand. So while you wait for your next game to start, you can learn freezing, fast pushing, slow pushing, bouncing waves, the list goes on, all in just a few minutes to maximize your improvement rate. These courses have been getting five-star ratings from all of our users raving at how helpful they are. That's not all though, as every week we release 10 brand new Smurf commentaries where a challenger player teaches you how to climb out of the exact rank you're stuck in. If you're looking for something more personal instead, then we got you covered with one-on-one -on -one coaching from our trained challenger experts. All of this seemed too good to be true, well, don't worry. We're backed up by a rank up guarantee. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill caps, then you get your money back no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below and get the rank you've always wanted. All right, that's a wrap on this one, guys. We here at Skullcapped want to thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.